It's been about a year and a half since we had one of these little chats about the future we deserve and it just shows how much can happen in a year. When I started the project I'd expected that the world would get more difficult and more complicated very very quickly and that on the original production schedule the book would be released into a complicated year, uh, what the Queen might call an uh, Annus Horribilis. And um, as can happen uh, things just took much longer than I expected them to, uh, including some of the production technology behind making the book easy to produce as the first of a series. So uh, I did something that I had not expected to do or told people I would do, which is I waited. And I waited. And I waited. Uh, until the world began to look like the conditions that I'd envisaged when I originally started the book, when I commissioned people to write, <clears throat> and when I told the picture about uh, trying to hold together a coherent picture of a positive future. Um, the book has been an enormous learning experience. Uh, there are probably three things that I want to say about it, but only two I will today. Uh, the first is that if you put an open call out on the internet, you expect a lot of the material to be very mixed in quality. And what I found from The Future We Deserve is that the material was universally awesome. Uh, there are probably maybe a dozen pieces out of a hundred that I really don't like. Um, but there are no pieces that I'm unhappy to publish. And to publish something which has a perspective that you consider to be uh, challenging, offensive, or just plain wrong is actually part of the process of being a responsible curator in the 21st century. You have to take account for the fact that if we had a single, unified, accurate global perspective, there would be, uh, well, we'd, we'd be living under the Catholic Church, right? The, the fact that we do not have a coherent story is an incredibly important part of our story. Um, the second thing that I wanted to comment on was how production technology is changing publishing. And this is something that you're going to see with Dougal's project as well, uh, the new public thinking book, which I'm published, uh, published in. Um, that when you bring the overhead of collecting texts together, editing them, uh, turning them into a book and producing them below a certain threshold, then the uh, commissioning and editorial functions get a chance to shine it, because you're no longer bound by uh, financial capital management as a necessary prerequisite for publishing. And the book is actually a very good format. Uh, I think it's going to be a good few years before the e-reader has the tangible, physical, pleasing solidity of the book. And in that interim period, uh, the ability to quickly, accurately produce um, pleasing, important paper is becoming radically democratised. So I think that we may see something happen to books a little like has happened to music, that rather than having a book which is a million seller, there are a thousand books which sell a thousand copies each. Um, and uh, this brings me to the production process. So Future We Deserve is, to all intents and purposes, finished. Uh, I am procrastinating and being finicky about the last few things. Uh, I am squeezing in a couple of pieces from people that I really wanted to publish and who just hadn't gotten it together a year ago. And uh, I am uh, working to finalise, cover and forward and a few other bits and pieces from uh, Sean Chamberlain, who I'm very uh, pleased to say has been a substantial help of this thing and uh, who I'm you know, glad to have writing a forward for it. Um, and I'll tell you more about that again another time. So, basically, sometime I'm going to put the last few things into the wiki and pull the trigger, and there will be a first edition for sale. And probably uh, sometime around end of March or beginning of April, we'll do a second pass where we'll fix the typos that come in from the first couple of hundred readers. Uh, we might issue a correction or two if there are things which have been challenged. Uh, generally, the, you know, the intention is to have the text be living. And uh, we'll also get to work on a second book, which I think is going to be called The Present We Have, and focus very much on trying to represent the world as it is in this uh, format of short 500-word piece or two or three infographic uh, articles, which begin to shape a picture of reality. Um, because it's very clear that you read the newspapers and you watch the television and you read the internet and what you see are lots and lots of glimmers and flickers of the real world peeking out from the haze of uh, consumer culture. 
and to collect those little flickers together into this large kind of glass object, uh, a little like the crystal ball um, from Lord of the Rings, and to actually be able to show people, look, this is how the world really is, um, I think that will be the next project. But for now, get the future we deserve out the door is the priority. Um, so a little more procrastination, a little more tweaking, and uh, the time will finally be right and it will launch. So thank you very much for your patience, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy the book when it's finally released. Thank you.